We got to sage, I'm sorry, we got to smudge together as brothers. Sir, can you please show us how to do this the right way? Yes, sir. Pat, you can get up, uh, turn around, put your arms out, all right? And you start here. So you, right. you blessing them right now, or what's uh -huh. this right? Put, pick up your left leg. Oh, yeah, get everything, get mm -hmm. the ankles. You can put it down, put up your right leg. I'm about to stand up while you're doing it. Yep, left leg up. Hopefully you sage him the right way. I'll give me some more money uh -huh. on this right Alex. Alex. <laughs> stress. I'm right. stressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get me, boy. Lord, give me three times. Get... All right, it's my turn. Turn around, turn around. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. You can eat sage? Right, uh, right leg up. You yeah. said yes, sir, to eat sage? Yeah, you I can eat boil sage. it as tea. Turn around. It's your boy. Give me right. Get his head. I'm like, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that mean like what? The energy or something? Like we can't tr transfer oh, the energy? Right. He focused. He, he so, focused. Yeah. Ooh. I need, if I had it every game, listen, I would have had another 4,000, 5,000 yards if I had this every day, every game. We had to fight to get a meal. Yeah, wrongfully accused. We had to fight to get a pill. That's why we right to get a deal. He on the team, he got to eat, you know, despite the skills. Facts. Keep it riding for the fam. You got to like the we get wheels straight up. But in the past bad, work up in the trash bag. I'll pass a lot to take the test before I pass class. Yeah. And my family needed bread. I had to come correct. That's why I keep airing it out like I just passed gas. The I Am Athlete Parlay, we've been hot, 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 hot. These are guaranteed wins. I'm gonna take Arizona over San Fran. Whoa. It's all about matchups, understanding who's playing against who. It's a game of chess. B Marshall here. I know you guys like to laugh sometimes with all my little trick shots, but here's the deal. We, we're in it. We're talking about NBA playoffs. DraftKings Sportsbook is the partner. I Am Athlete is the platform. Athlete is the code, the promo code. Use the promo code after you download the app, DraftKings Sportsbook. If you bet $5, you're gonna get 150 in new bets if you win. That's 30 to one odds. You can't get that anywhere else. Same game parlay, stacking bets to make your bag a little bit bigger. Download the app, get in the game, make it rain, baby. <gasps> so much action right now, I gotta go watch. DraftKings.com is the sportsbook. I Am Athlete is the platform. Parlay, I am athlete all day. Promo code athlete. Let's get it. Okay, another show, another episode of I Am Athlete with my boys, Pac Man Jones, right? You mind if I call you Pac Man Jones? No, Adam Pac Man Jones. School Pac Man <laughs> And then my boy, B Marsh. We have a special guest. So, um, 2011, right? First overall pick. My Dallas All American, whole career. So he's always been like that. And he's balling for the Nets right now. You know what I'm saying? Got a ring with LeBron. I'm happy to have Kyrie Irving. Some people may call him Uncle Drew. Some people call him the scale god. Kyrie Irving work. in the building. Appreciate happy to have you, my brother. Thank you, Respect. And thank, thank you, you for yes, the smudging. Yes, sir. No, no the terminology, all the viewers. It's called smudging. Mm -hmm. I feel better. You feel better? I want to learn. I feel I do I do feel a sense of peace. I feel like his presence came in and changed. He's it. positive, bro. You know I what I'm saying? So like he's positive. The, the the environment do feel different. Yeah. You know, but we sit here playing around a little bit. It's cool, but when you start saging yourself, yeah. like yeah. it's like you went into serious. a meditative state. Yeah. You Probably know what like I mean? Grounding. Huh? Grounding. Um is is just as sacred as lighting the sage. So everything has intention, you know, and, and it's really about uh, paying homage to all those who have come before you. And uh, there has been numerous wars that have taken place over centuries right. against uh, indigenous Americans or indigenous people, um, black Americans, black people. And this is very sacred to us because it's a ritual, you mm -hmm. know, and it, it means different things in different households and different cultures all around the world. Sage is a global thing, you know what I mean? And for me personally, I went back to my tribe in South Dakota um, reclaiming my identity, reclaiming my power, reclaiming my tribal relationships, my communal relationships, and I got my name, um, Ela. Mm. Ela. Ela. H E L A. What's that? And it means little mountain in, oh, uh, means little mountain. in my tribe. So I have a, a name um, that was handed down to me from my great grandfather, mm. um, and it was given to me from my tribe. So that was around 2017, and um, I'll, I'll say this it shook my world up because uh, all the history 
was just being given to me and then my ancestors were standing right next to me. So everywhere I go, I'm not walking alone. That's so this so is in South Dakota? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how, how do you Standing find... Rock. Standing Rock or uh, McLaughlin, South Dakota, North Dakota, Arizona, a little bit up because America before it was colonized was indigenous. So, wow. so what was this, what happened, you know, in your life that made you want to find your tribe or even think like that? Yeah. And then also, mm -hmm. you know, how do you find, when you say, I found my tribe. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? How do you do that? You know, saying ancestor. Right. Uh, can I find my tribe? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. I'm, I'm gonna just say this. There are um, ways to reconnect to your history by just asking questions to your elders. They're walking libraries. You know what I mean? They have a lot of information and wisdom and knowledge to impart on us. But uh, of course, we're out here living fast lives, so it's, it's hard to sit down sometimes with your grandmother, your great grandmother, and um, you know. It is, I'll say this, the phrase for 2022 on that I give to my brothers and sisters is find your tribe season. Mm. It's find your tribe season. It really is about reconnecting to your lineage and appreciating it, you know? And when you find your identity, it's just, you're not walking confused out here and trying to piece yourself together from other people's knowledge about who you are, you know? Cause there's a lot of false information about who we are as indigenous black people. So um, when I found my tribe, it literally was a purpose that was given to me from my mom. Um, she passed away, transition, excuse me, transition when I was four years old. Right. And then my grandmother at, at five years old. So my grandmother was in the Bronx and then my mom was in South Dakota, right? right. And um, my mom was adopted out of the tribe. This was during the 60s and this was happening pretty often that, um, you know, there was a war against indigenous Americans and they were placing them in different schools and different homes. So my mom was part of that, uh, that time. And then, uh, yeah, it just, it was heavy on me. It was heavy on me. I just felt like I was lost in the world, you know, without my mom and my grandmother. So I needed some direction. So went back, got my naming done, went back to uh, the Bronx, Mitchell Projects where my dad grew up, my, my four aunts, my uncle. And, um, you know, we just started really making changes, making impact. 2017, yep. you were playing where? I was still in Cleveland. So yep. you were in Cleveland. Yep. Your mom passed when you were four, mm -hmm. transitioned when, mm -hmm. when you were four, and then your grandmother a year later, mm -hmm. drugs, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, unfortunate, just like the way that happened was, it was more than just drugs, it was just environment. You know what I mean? Wow. Growing up in the projects, growing up in the hood, you know what comes with it. So they, they, my, I'll say there, there were instances where my uh, aunts and my, and my uncle had to be grown-ups before mm. they were 12, 13 yep. years old because yeah. my grandmother, you know, she was young. She had her first child at 13 years old. I'm trying to yeah. kind of put myself in your shoes, right? Like 2017, like you're on top of the world. Yeah. Your Uncle yeah. Drew. Was the movie <laughs> yeah. out by then? No, nah, I filmed it in 2017. You, so like it came out in 2018. Yeah, you your own shoe, you're on top of the world. So like what, what? What was going on in your world where you was like, yo, I gotta reconnect? Yeah. You know, like, yeah. You could be traveling the world, you could be partying, you could be doing other things, but you, you, mm -hmm. you know, 2017, you're like, you know, connecting with your mom, your grandmother, your tribe. Like, yeah. I'm trying to figure out, like, yeah. what was that? So I, I'll say it was uh, 2017 leading into 2018, it was really around that time. So, uh, it was like climbing up one of the tallest mountains in the world winning a championship. And mm -hmm. then when I got up there and you realize that all the accolades and all the achievements, yeah, it feels good. It feels great to add that to the career, but it, it just, I felt empty mm -hmm. after I done traveled, after I done partied, after I done spent a bunch of money, after I done asked for more right, deals, right. after I done, asked, you know, we, we all been through it. So feeling on the top of that mountain, man, after a while, I, I just felt like I didn't really I didn't really know who I was. I didn't know um, wow. what my future was going to be, you know? And when that happens, uh, I didn't know where to really turn. So I started digging deep into my uh, family lineage and that's where it led me, South Dakota. Right. And, and, and family to you is, is so big. Even like hearing you talk about it, yeah. like doing the research and know about your family. I look at like you and your pops, right? Your sister and like, I have my dad in my life. You know what I'm yes, saying? Sir. But growing up, especially in the black communities, mm -hmm. Most black players, especially the superstar players, et cetera, they don't have their dads in their life, right? And yeah. you have you and your dad. Like, you have a, a super crazy bond. One of the games I, I went to, um, the Nets, y'all played, I forget who y'all played, I think New York. Mm -hmm. And you came to the game and you was with your pops. 
And I was like, damn, like that's that's what people like strive to have. You know what yeah. I mean? People be looking for that. Talk about like your relationship with, with showing your pops, man, because that's <clears throat> a lot of black kids don't have that. Yeah, I well, man, when my mom transitioned, my grandmother transitioned, it, it shook my dad's world. Just imagine, you know, you looking at one of the strongest men you ever know, and then he loses his mom and his wife in a matter of right. a two year span. So he was going through a lot. Mm -hmm. And just like in our community, we, we hide it, you know, yep. we, we hide it very well. We, we, we wake up every single day and um, I watch my dad wake up every single day and, and, you know, try to strive for that positivity and set a better example for us. So uh, we became really close uh, when he sat us down and he explained to us that my mom transitioned. I'm five years old. I remember like it was yesterday, you know what wow. I mean? Like, so when he was sharing that with me, excuse me, my sister was five, I was four years old. When he was explaining that to us, I still remember that day like it was yesterday, man, four years old, and I still had this memory. He's sitting us like, your mom, this happened. This is what our life is going to look like now. Um, I just want to let you know that you guys could talk to me about anything. So from that point on, it was just an open door policy with him. I could talk to him about anything. I mean, anything that I was going through. Obviously, I didn't tell him everything, right, but right. I definitely shared with him some uncomfortable moments. and. Um, we really grew as brothers. You know, I'm watching my dad uh, become a better man and he's setting a better example for me. But one thing he always shared with me is like, you're gonna be a better man than me. Right, right. That was, that was always in our household. You're gonna be a better man than me and I'm a hell of a man. He's like, yeah, I'm a hell of a man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's what what you tell <laughs> I'm a hell of a man. You, you outdo me, you're gonna have to do this, this, this. So I, I used to look up to him like a giant, man, he's 6'4". I was, I was small until so I was about like 14, 15 years old and I hit my growth spurt, but uh, he really invested uh, the weekends in us, me and my sister. My sister going to dance, doing her art thing, me doing my basketball thing, and I, I spent every weekend in New York City, wow. all across the boroughs, playing ball, and that was our that connection. Was, was that your coping, like, doing, I know it was a long time ago, but mm -hmm. when you was going that, besides talking to your dad, like for another young athlete or another young kid that's going through the same thing, you know, parents just passed away, you know. I lost my dad early when I was yeah. seven, he got killed right in front of me. It took me a long time to, to cope with it, you know what I mean, the anger part. Like, what, what can you tell a young kid that's going through a similar situation that you went through right now? Oh man, well, sometimes it's, it's even uh, difficult to hear stories like that. And I've been through, been through what I've been through, but to hear that, I, I definitely empathize with you and I'm here for you. You know, as a brother in this world, understanding that losing somebody close is one of the hardest things to deal with. So talking to the youth and, and then trying to, my best to simplify things is, it doesn't work for me. You know, it's hard mm -hmm. to simplify that to a kid, um, tell them like, you know, everything's gonna be okay and they just lost a cousin, a brother, right, right. a sister, a mo uh, you know, a mom, a dad. Uh, it, it's it's one of the hardest things to um, to do. Uh, but I do my best by explaining to them that there's more to live for, you know. And that's a little cliche out there too. But it, it's it's a bigger purpose out here for you, you know. And and you have to deal with the stages of grief. You have to you have to deal with your emotions when you're ready. Most kids are not ready to face that, you know. And some kids are. But I would say that the, the positive light that I, I found from sharing my story was being able to connect with communities all around the world that deal with similar situations. So the kids that I'm talking to specifically, um, just, just find your tribe and find people that are really gonna put that love around you. I, I had so many motherly figures in my life. I had so many other fatherly <laughs> figures in my life. So they, they really put their hands on me to keep me in the right direction because I easily could have ended up in so many different places trying different stuff. Your, your pops, he um, he played ball too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So and then yeah, yeah. Godfather was it, Rod Strickland? Yes, sir. Y'all know who that is? Yeah. yeah. Dog. He was nice. Of course. He had the football tape on his on his joints. <laughs> that was no. <normal. laughs> so did that develop your skill set? Cause you talk about New York and all that and Jersey. Your yeah. Back. Did that kind of mold well, your game? I'll say this because I, I definitely took the pride of Jersey as I get a little bit older, but I spent more time in New York. Than I did in Jersey like at, at certain mm -hmm. points. You know, okay. I used to be there with my grandmother. She lived in uh, Mount Vernon. My aunt Mount lived Vernon. in Mount Vernon. Okay. Um, my aunt, my aunts lived in Harlem. My stepmom lived in Harlem as well. We were all around the same, boroughs. yeah, boroughs. Like we, we were all one bridge away. So you know, I have family still in the Bronx, living in uh, Mitchell Project. So it was like, I was around it all. I saw it 
all. And some of it traumatizes <laughs> shit out of me. I right, right, yeah, right, yeah, for sure. <laughs> because when you realize that you, you're trying to strive to make a job out of a, a game, you know, that people are just playing in the parks every day. Right. You have to approach it on a, on a different, um, like, mental alignment, shall I say. Like, and I don't want to throw these words out. I'll explain it to you. When I say mental alignment, you just had to really be able to shut out what was going on around you okay. to be able to focus up because, you know, being in the parks in New York, <laughs> I know, you yeah. never knew it was going to happen after <laughs> right. a certain time. And, and um, they used to, my, my, my family used to just throw us out there, but we all used to stick together. It was like eight of us, eight cousins, all hanging out. And um, to answer your question, part of that family dynamic, it gave me access to people who have done things before me. And that was my Uncle Rod. My Uncle Rod okay. grew up in the same uh, neighborhood as my dad. They were two buildings apart. So they would walk across. It was about four or five of them that they all hung out together. And when my Uncle Rod made it, he got drafted to the Knicks. Yeah. Just imagine getting drafted to your hometown. Right, right. right. <laughs> you know, he, got, he had to get out of there after like two years. You know what I mean? He was the first um, family member to move from New York to New Jersey. And if you know anything about moving yep, from yep. New York to New Jersey, that's a big accomplishment. Yeah, yeah, you know, right, moving right. to the birds. Right. Right. Successful yeah. Jersey. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, made it. from New yeah. York sure. to New Jersey. So um, he, he definitely had an incredible journey and story to tell me. But me and him didn't connect until a little bit later, in like Word. 16, 17 years old. He was always around, but he was still, he was at Memphis. Right? He was at yeah, Kentucky. Yeah. Okay, he, nice. he had 17 years in the league. Yeah. Ah, nice. Yeah. nice. So... Having him as my godfather, I always had somebody to look up to, but my father was always the one that was working with me on my oh. skills at home. So Pops kind of, that skill and all that? Yeah. yeah. So, me, and my, me and my Uncle Rod have never gotten a chance to work out. Ever. 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 Like, we've, we've played horse and stuff like that, but we've never, like, gone in the gym, like, yo, put like, the yo, cones out. Right, right, right. We're going to get 45 minutes, hour in. Like, we've, mm -mm. watching him and my dad, they were my two that, favorite that, players. That, this, that came, come on, that, all that, that's, that's so, him. It, you never saw my dad play though. I was just gonna say, you never saw my dad play. You never saw my dad play, bro. My uncle Rod, nice, but my dad is my favorite player. I my dad and then Kobe. Like they one A and one B for me, bro. Right. I don't care what people say about it. Yeah. My dad and Kobe. Nah, one of the thing, one of the things you 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 haven't really had an opportunity uh, to lean into is kind of like the journey and going back to the beginning, right? Mm. So that's one of the things we want to talk about. Yeah. I, I saw on an, uh, another like show or a podcast, maybe it was a boardroom mm -hmm. where you talked about um, your father and you brought up, you know, he was like, the interesting thing about my dad and our relationship in basketball is where it started. He said he was putting the rim up or the hoop up in the backyard. Mm -hmm. And that's the first thing that we did together around basketball and it, and it taught me the details. Your mind is just unbelievable, right? Mm -hmm. Like most kids, oh yeah, I got my hoop. I'm excited about that. But you're talking <laughs> about like, yo, like, my first interaction was like basketball, and that taught me the details of it. Walk me through that time, and when was that? All right, so we had uh, just moved from Newark, New Jersey to West Orange, and we were living in Society Hill in Newark, and we went out to West Orange, moved into this nice house. How old are you? I, I was third grade. First time being in our own crib, my dad was hype. I mean, first time owning a home, you know what I mean? We were renting from my, uh, my Uncle Rod's family in Newark. Like when he moved to Jersey, we moved in the same crib. So when we went out to West Orange, uh, we, we moved in, we got the court outside. He just put the directions on the floor. And uh, I'm just picking up the basketball, like going back and forth, you know, doing what I'm used to be doing. I'm like, yo, all right, all right, dad, when the, when, when's the room gonna be? When's yeah, the hoop gonna be? When the real stuff about to pop off. <laughs> He's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, nah, when you gonna put up the, when you gonna put up the hoop? It's like, no, when are we going to put up the hoop? Directions on the floor, it's bolts, oh. all his screws everywhere. He got the toolbox out. The rim is just the base. He's like, we're going to put this up, and we're going to do this together, and I'm going to show you how to put something together from the ground up. And you may not understand right now, you may not realize what you're doing now, but this is going to matter for you because details, don't, go, don't miss out on the details. Mm. Really enjoy putting something together that you can work with, you know what I mean? So yeah. I, I literally was handcrafting with him and put the net up, and then once the net went up, it was on. It was on, man. And, and we, we talked about it when we got in the house a little bit, but my dad definitely was very detail-oriented. Right. Very detail-oriented okay, and pops. wanted to teach me about like, yeah. putting your hands to work and then enjoying your fruits of your labor.
Our audience sometimes say that I don't be listening. I be cutting people off. So you I'm cut me off, bro. No, I ain't going to cut you well, off, but I'm listening. When, yeah. Yeah. Listen. when we start talking about <laughs> basketball, when we start yeah. talking about basketball. I'm going to get into that real soon now. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. I am. Yeah, but um, what you just said was, you know, the details of putting this hoop together in it, what comes up is process. Understanding the journey, embracing the journey. Year four, year five, Coach Tony Sperano, head coach of the Miami Dolphins, you know, he, he came in and, and I used to, you know, like jot down all his, his quotes. Like he had these legendary quotes. And, and one day he came in, he said, um, and this is the first time I heard it at this time. Um, he said, uh, embrace the journey, not the destination, mm -hmm. right? And that takes me back to what we talked about maybe five, 10 minutes ago, going to 2017, where you said, you just won the championship, the, the finals, right? You got everything. Climbing up this large mountain, and then it's like the sense of like, you're unfulfilled, yeah. right? I think that's a beautiful thing, because I think a lot of us players struggle with our identity being wrapped up in the sport, mm. right? So for you, that happened in 2017. That was a, that was a big moment. I'm 24. You're 24. 24 at that point. Right. So, you know, when you think about like what this path that you're on and like being present, which I think is the most powerful state that you can be in is in the present moment. Not mm -hmm. thinking about next year or the next day is like, what about right now? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I think that's a, one of the reasons why a lot of our guys are struggling is because the identity is wrapped up in the sport and they don't understand that. Like we think that that's what we're here for. We think that winning the Super Bowl, winning the championship, getting a big contract is going to fulfill us and it doesn't, yeah. right? Yeah. So um, I wanna highlight that because I, I think that a lot of us look at you because I'm sitting here watching you, everything that you say and like you're interesting. Smart dude. What the Duke though? So you shouldn't be surprised. What the Duke? Yeah, but it Smart ain't. Guy. But it's not about that. It's more so like on the path to enlightenment. You know, it's not. It's Absolutely. Deputy, this is a different enlightenment period in, in our. Uh, I'll say in our, our history of the world, man. Information is much more accessible, but there has to be a level of discernment about what you're digesting. You know. And I'm sorry, audience and everybody listening, because I'm. Tr I, it's hard for me to articulate myself right now. But basically, what I'm saying, what I'm trying to get to is, that you're probably the most misunderstood athlete out there, yeah. right? So sitting here, and I'm just locked in. We've had so many people sit down, uh, you know, on this show, Colin Kaepernick, and, and hit, you know, really never sat down with someone in that kind of capacity and over the last five years. Coach Flores, Antonio Brown, he did his thing, and Lil Wayne, et cetera, et cetera. And, like, I've never been disengaged, right? Like, I truly believe you're probably one of the most misunderstood athletes out there. That's counterculture. Like your journey over the last five, six years, I believe is counterculture to sports. And that's one of the reasons why you're misunderstood. But it's like this, I feel like there's this tension and this toy, like this big like fight around you. You know what I'm saying? And then you're there in, in the middle and just trying to stay present in, in, in that peace. Do you yeah. understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. I feel you too. I feel you. I want to yeah. ask you, because yeah. a lot of viewers want to know. You talked about how you thought that y'all could win championship if, if, if my man stayed. Um, James Harden, right? Mm -hmm. Which, which most people thought that. Yeah. He won the he won the trade. You did that before. You asked for trades, mm -hmm. and you asked for a trade. We probably was on the best team, other than the Warriors. I would say it was the best team. Hold on, no, no, no. Let's keep it real. Well, Golden, that Golden Cavs, come on, State Warriors or Cavs, whatever, however you want to push it. It was like, gonna happen, like come on, yeah. five times. And y'all had that championship every year, like like the Celtics and the Lakers type. Yes, sir. LeBron James, mm -hmm. if y'all stay together, how many rings you think y'all have won? Y'all so dangerous together. Yeah. I'd probably be in LA right now. <laughs> <laughs> probably, be, probably be traveling with his backpack. No, I'm, <clears throat> no, I'm joking, man. That that was like, that was t a time in my career that I, I look back on, and and we've had conversations, me and Bron, plenty of conversations. So y'all cool. That's my dog. Yeah. That's shout out Bron. Yeah. Shout out to Bron, man. Bron, because nice. when when you're in that position as one of the leaders of our culture and, and yeah. not just sport, but in general, like he does things that go way beyond just the court. Right. Right. Great role impact yes, all, all around different communities. And um, people agree with his stance and some people disagree. Right. So I was learning on the fly. You know, when he first came back, I was 22, 23. Right. So He's I was just young, a young kid man. trying to help Cleveland patch up 
<laughs> their relationship yeah, with him. Right, right. I got drafted the year after. So when I came in, it was like, are you going to be better than LeBron? Are you? <laughs> that was my first question when right. I got into Cleveland. So it was mixed emotions the whole time that we were uh, competitors. And then when he came back a, a, as my teammate, you right, know what I mean? Right. Came back to Cleveland. That's his home. That, that's not somewhere where he just right. goes yeah. and vacates. He's, from there, he's yeah. from there. That's mm -hmm. like having my family in, in BK. You know, right, right, right. Me going home, all that extra stuff doesn't happen. So I definitely feel like me learning from him helped us accelerate my understanding of the game that we're in, the business that we're in, because I was watching him deal with it in, in front of the camera, off the camera, being LeBron James. That comes with his own responsibility. So not only was he teaching me off the court, but on the court, this man is a savant. He's, oh, a, he's a genius in terms of how he prepares, how he shakes, takes care of his body, how he treats his body, what he does every single day to be able to be at the top, mm. you know what I mean? To stay at the top. Yeah. And people want to see that man fail every minute of the Hate day. Yeah. But then he has a whole other side. Braun, 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 Braun. So I, I, right, I right. definitely was like, all right, I need to build up <laughs> yeah. my community the same way where, yeah. you know, success, failure, we got your back. Haters, go ahead, y'all got it. When me and him clicked in 2015, I had one of my best years. You know, I, I was all NBA third team, you know, shot a high percentage on the field. You know, we, we, we were going back and forth with a one, two, you know, punch. And then we had Caleb, Tristan, JR, Shump. Right. We had players. We had hoopers, bro. Like yeah. we, we, Bron was like behind the scenes. What's his nickname? They like call him Legium. Yeah, he's a GM. Yeah, he's yeah, right. GM. Like they're like, yeah, yeah, he be going Don't home. Say right you know what's his nickname. You know he the GM. <laughs> he is yeah, a GM. Yeah, yeah, he, he the GM. He put that whole squad together. Yeah, he put the squad together. Okay, I wasn't okay, mad okay. At him. I wasn't mad at him. I was like, all right, bet. So this is how this is how it goes. That's dope. Yeah. So we definitely, I feel, would have accomplished a lot more. But again, we go back to climbing that that mountain, and when I was going through some of my trials and learning about who I was. I, it was a lot harder to reconnect to to everybody again because mm -hmm. I had a lot of questions about mm -hmm. the world. What, what what was my place in the world? Not what was my place in the basketball oh. realm. You know, I could yeah. be the greatest point guard. This I'd be skilled, and I, I was focused on that for a majority of um, majority of my basketball life. I just wanted to be one of the best to play. But when I started having questions about my life outside of this, it started to seep in, and I was becoming misunderstood. Oh. Yeah. That's when I started to become misunderstood. Is when I asked for a trade, yeah. and everybody didn't realize I was asking for a trade from the Cleveland Cavaliers, but they were like, nah, you you asked me for a trade. The from narrative from LeBron. From LeBron. LeBron. That's the narrative. So that they narrative do. was yeah. carrying on. Now it's everything that he posts, everything I post is subliminal. Yeah. Everything that we do and everything that, you know what I mean, we talk about is subliminal. Yeah. Right. I don't know if people remember, but I had a conversation with LeBron after. Um, when well, you called him? In Boston. I well, called you called him. him. Yep. Like, Why would you say that out in public? Why would you say that out in public? I'm like, because y'all stay on my shit about yep. <laughs> LeBron. Yep. About man, you, you don't know what it takes. As soon as I ask somebody that's a peer of mine <laughs> that is respected, that has won in this league about what it takes to lead a young team to a championship, because that's what he did with us. Mm. He was leading us to a championship. I was 22, Shump was 23, um, my boy Jordan McCray was 23, and then the rest of the guys were like Richard Jefferson, you know, we had JR. Like, we had right. all Love. those guys that yeah. were already ready to uh -huh. fill in a role. Yep. Yeah. I was coming in every day like, yo, I'm better than you, 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 you. I don't care. Y'all can line up. We go 1v1 right now. Ooh. That energy was me every day. So right. you, you know, me going against Brown, we played one on one uh, one time, by the way. I'm not going to tell y'all who won or lost. Uh, no, no, no. People no, 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 tell us, bro. We had fun going back and forth. We had fun. We, <laughs> we had, had fun. fun back and forth. We had fun. I'm not going to talk about who got the better right, like y'all right. two, but okay. we had fun back and forth. But I, I, I'll close it in like this. <laughs> no, I'm a troll, B. <laughs> Leave, leave it for the speculation. <laughs> leave it for the speculation. But I definitely feel like if I was in the same maturity level I am now and understanding who I am, and I look back on that time then, we definitely, definitely would have won more championships together because there would have been a better man-to-man -man understanding about yeah. what I'm going through. I, could, I didn't know how to share my emotions. I didn't, know how, to, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't know how to do that. So instead of sharing, I isolated myself mm. and, I, and I just started pouring myself more into the game of basketball and I had one of my better seasons, but I wasn't connecting with everybody as much during our championship year. So in 2017, it was a different year for us. Yeah. So when we went against Golden State, we went against a great team. 
when you're not a great team and you're not clicking on all cylinders together, right. and together, oh. you're easily defeatable. Mm. You're, you're defeated before you even get to the, the arena. Right. Yeah. We, we were in those games against Golden State, but we, we definitely could have given them a run for their money, regardless if they right. had Kev. You brought up, uh, you know, with LeBron, you experienced that, you know, KD, same thing. Yes, sir. Who, what narrative is, who has more, more of the worst narratives out there, they, KD or LeBron? They both equally deal with a life that I think 99% of the world doesn't necessarily understand. Yep. Only us can really, really see through, like, oh, man, the underlining mm -hmm. emotions that go into them trying to leave a legacy that is perfect to them, but is always trying to get destroyed daily. Right. We've never seen any any guys like that. You're right about that. We've right. never seen any guys like what, how, how many guys can you compare? We, we try to compare Bron to this guy. He's uncomparable. We try to compare Kev <laughs> to this guy. Uncomparable. So after the comparison stopped, what do they try to go to? The nitpick yep. of every single year, every single week, asking these guys questions because their voice holds merit in communities across the world. You know why? Especially you, you know why? Because they've been LeBron, doing it for 17 LeBron is, years. LeBron's the, I got to say this, yo. I don't care who, who's better, Kobe, Bron, or Drew, MJ. LeBron is the best role model. And I don't know what he does in his personal life. And as, as being athletes, it's hard to be straight. It's hard to do everything right. He's the best, bro, as being the role model. Like off the field, or off the court, the stuff he does with education stuff for his, his, his community, saying all the right things. I know sometimes he's like, man, Somebody asked him a question. I know he's like, this mother, he don't do it. All that he he took. I remember that for when he when he went to, he got not traded, but when he when he left Cleveland and went to the Heat, my opinion was I thought that was a sucker move, right? That's just my opinion. Everybody had the different opinions. But I watched how he, that dude really just took all that heat, right? Take all of it, took it all of it. He didn't even say much back. I'm like, damn, you all that criticism and the way you no, that's no, that's not all. That's not all. But, but, that's not 100 true. But I'm, I'm just saying, yo, it's hard to be straight, bro. LeBron is the best at it. Like he is. The, yeah. You know it's what I'm clean, saying? Clean. The stuff he does, like, bro, for sure. You gotta respect that. But he struggled that first but, 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 year going yeah. to the Heat, but, though. But, but you, you're but, right. But, what you said. And you talking about how, like, um, because first of all, y'all, y'all didn't talk for a while. When you call him in, in Boston, mm -hmm. I did my homework. You didn't talk to LeBron for a while when mm -mm. you traded, right? Mm -mm. Okay. So then you, you call him like, yo, now I know what it really means. To be like a leader and dealing with these young balls, because Tatum and them was young balls, and you was the old head, which was mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. My question is like, because you never really talked about like what made you want the trade. You talked about how you you came into yourself, and yeah. learned this and that, but you never really talked about like why you asked for the trade. So, oh man, let me. I put you on the spot for a little bit. No, 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 because it, it's it's a good reflection time. You know what I mean when you think about all of the events that it, that took place before we got to that point. Before we got to the... Before I got to the point where I, I asked for the okay, trade. Okay, okay, okay. Right? Okay. So... Look at this smirk. I had, I had smirk. different plans, and Bron had different plans, oh. and our team had different plans of what the future looked like. That means that our organization, from our GM to Bron to me, there were future plans in place already. Oh. I wasn't going to be part of those future plans if it meant that our team was going to break up. Oh, so shit. if our team was just going to be gutted because I left, Bron left, K-Love asked for a trade, Tristan didn't get paid or, or Shump didn't get paid, like that was on the brink of it. Like we, in order to keep the team together, we all had to make certain sacrifices. Finance, so, financially? Not just financial, I'm just talking about in order for us to cohesively stay together, okay. finance is a part of it, but yeah. in order for us to stay together, right. we had to understand that we had to be more open about what we expected from each other in the future. When you say that, because I, I want you to simplify. Let's no, simplify okay, look, a little bit. You're in the locker room, and you guys know you have a championship caliber team yes, for the next do. five years. Okay. How many conversations are really being had about what the next two to five years right. looks like for everybody to be comfortable and happy? Okay, okay. Those conversations, I don't know if those happen in y'all locker room. So that's right money, time. that's players, that's everything you're saying. That's family, that's environment, that's coaching, that's that's oh, okay. all top to bottom. We're on a different axle in the uh, NBA at times, bro, yeah, in are. terms of our access to yeah. our GM. Yeah, that's, our that's yeah, especially y'all. Yeah, especially y'all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's different. So our education in that sense of the business of basketball is just like, yeah. it, it's, it's front and center. There are no 
like gray wind, you know, gray right. windows or sort of say like smoky windows where you can't see what's going on. Oh, okay. So when I ask for the trade, I'm like, look, I'd rather go experience other things in the league before I start really settling down okay. into right. a career. Yeah. That you I still was young too. Yeah, though. I was 24. Did you inform Brown that you was one the league? Nah, we didn't talk. Okay. We didn't talk. We didn't talk during that time. Uh, I was in the summer in China. Uh, Why are you smiling again? I know the smirk. I know the smirk. Because when I because when I tell you when I tell you this, it's for it's for good purpose. Because I know the viewers want to know. <laughs> the viewers want to know. The viewers want to know. No, we didn't talk during that time. And again, when I look back on uh, what what I was going through at that time, I wish I did, because it would have been a mutual understanding. Mm -hmm of what the future will hold for both of us. And we knew how much power we both had together. Mm. Me and him in the league together, running Cleveland. Dominant. And then being able to put a better team together every single year would have definitely been worth it. You know what I mean? But for okay. me, I threw all my chips in. I said, look, I'm, I'm ready to go experience something new. I'm young. Like build, I'm, like build your own drink. And I don't mind that. You know why I don't mind mm -hmm. that? Because I, I've been there. I ain't gonna lie, I've been there with teams. You have a big dog, right? It's like, yo. Thank you, but it's time for me. I'm Kyrie Irving. I got my own shoe, signature shoe that I got popping. Right? Big and shoe. It, and it looks better. This yeah. is my opinion. Anyway, that part of it, and it's like, yo, I'm the first pick overall, too. We got a championship, and I learned from you. So now, like, you ever work for somebody, right? They teach you the game. Now I can stand on my own two feet. So thank you. I'm going to move on. Yeah, no hard feelings. I don't think there's nothing wrong, uh -uh. wrong with that at all. No. I, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. That's what I it just, sounds like. I'm saying. That's what it sounds not, like. But yeah. I mean, you it already covered it. So centered around building your own, building my own thing. Yeah. But like again, it was let me go experience yeah. the right. league. Let me go experience right. what right. was what my trade value right. is. Let me go see you, how many you, other you, teams you want get me to be part of the shadows. But a lot, a lot yes. of greats. I'm gonna lie though. Yeah. I, you know, it hasn't affected your career. But a lot of greats, has affected their career somehow. Like if you ever hear Shaq, he gets so emotional about him and Penny. Then he goes back, gets even more emotional with, with Kobe and him. Right. And I'm like, dang, like stuff like that. You look back, like, yo, maybe if we were to talk, because they said that he said that him and Bron didn't talk. Like, yo, look, this is how I feel. This is how you feel. Let's work together to it, get this. You know what I'm saying? I, I know, but at the end but of the it, day, it's simple. Yeah. It comes down like you thirty. It ain't that simple though. It, it yeah, is it simple. Is. Yeah. Let me tell you how simple. It's not that simple. Like, it's not that simple. It's not that hard. He didn't do it. Hold on. He didn't do it with Bron. Hold on. He didn't do it. Pick up all. It ain't that easy, bro. It ain't that easy. point, I want to get out of my bundle of this umbrella and do my own umbrella. Ain't no wrong with that. But that's what. That's what I'm trying to do. Hold on, time out. You just started. You just said Shaq and Kobe. He just said Shaq and Kobe did it too. He, he got a Houston guy. Crazy. But what is <laughs> this? This is what I mean by simple. It comes down to ego. I don't think it's it ego. Does, it does. It, ego. it comes down to ego. It comes down to being young. He got his right? own like, goals, though. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with it. What I'm I, saying, I that's the, ego. He got his own Just goals. Me, listen, to what I'm saying. Okay. The problem is when you do things like this, we start criticizing. But at the end of the day, you were 24. Mm -hmm. Shaq and Kobe went through it. Shaq and Penny went through it. You just said KD, right? And so we start. It goes back into this whole narrative. Communication, that's the problem. Yeah, but when you're 24, I had, I had guys come train with me, man, and come off training with me, go be Pro Bowls, go, go to the Pro Bowl, have their best years, like just showing them the way. And then come back to me, this happened to me th three times, and said, you know what, OG, I need to go try things that work for me. Like, I'm going to go do something different. Never went back to the Pro Bowl. I'm like, I just showed you the way. <laughs> so it's just like, it's just that youth. That's all it is. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with it. You got to do what's best for you. It's a business. Everybody got their own brands. Mm. It's not just true. 32 NFL teams. You got right. 32 NFL teams. You got 32 quarterbacks. You got 64, you know, X's and Z's. How many corners? Like, and everybody's their own entity. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. no, you're right about that. That's but but, but when you look back at it, that's why I love the conversation for you to be able to, like, look, like, you know, in retrospect, I could have did this. I could have did that. We don't see that part. They don't even give us the opportunity to have these type of conversations. Yeah. You're mm -hmm. not human. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to think like that. But but they hold up, but hold up. Now they had power. Huh? He, remember, he just talked about that. You and Brown had enough power to communicate. Yo, this is what we want for the future. They mm -hmm. had enough power to do that. Mm -hmm. This is what we want. This is right. what we want to right. happen. Right. So mm -hmm. that's yeah. how I said about communication. But then again, I think he's right because I'd have been like that. Look, thank you, big big dog. But I want to go do my own thing. It's time right. for me to have my own. Because right. you you right. people don't haven't played like dude like Tom Brady. I played in my last year. I seen the difference. I played with some good players, but like. Off the, off the field, like the stuff you got to deal with, 
is similar to LeBron. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I don't think there's nothing wrong with going so, to get his own thing. First of all, I'll say, let me let me give you a little background. When I first got to Cleveland, I think I told you this earlier, but that was an uncomfortable position for me to be in, to be in a city where you got the hometown kid going to the heat and then I get drafted oh, afterwards. Yeah. And now I'm asked every single day, are you what about Brown? What about this? Oh. For for my career thus far, since I asked for the trade and I and I got traded to Boston. What's what's up with you and Bron? What's up with you and Bron? Everybody keeps asking the same <laughs> questions over and over and over again. And it's like you brought up the point of Shaq and Penny, yeah. Shaq and Kobe, other people that that ended up, um, you know, not playing together for longer than what people would have wanted. Right. Right. So we had to, and I say we, like me and my other teammates, but specifically Bron, because he's one of the biggest I play with, Kev too. That is way bigger than just a than just trying to satisfy what everybody wants to hear. That's we right. got to be cool as brothers, whether we're playing together or whether we're not playing together. Right. We have to protect one another because it will seep into family life mm-hmm. where people will really think that we don't like each other right. based on us not being able to play together anymore. You know right. what I mean? You right. asked for a trade, so you must hate that dude. Yeah, right, right, right. It was, that that was the furthest it's thing from the truth. That's not right. true. Right. That's not true. So I had to defend myself. He had to defend himself. Right. And it's like, I'm trying to put that to bed so I could continue Ooh, to build my own legacy. Right. But I'm continuously reminded over and over again, yo, you left. Bron, how can you do that? You got his fan base. You got my fan base. You got team fan bases going at it. Yo, why, why couldn't this work? And I say this. I asked for a trade because I was looking for something different. I was a man of my word when I went to the organization. I sat the, big, the higher ups down and said, look, I know y'all have future plans. Tell me right now. They told me their future plans. I said, look, I'm not, this isn't for me. That's right. Share that with them. Didn't get a chance to talk to Bron before the media ended up coming out and saying that I asked for a trade. Mm -hmm. So I go over to China and I'm on my Nike tour. Somehow the news gets leaked while I'm in China. I'm not even Mm -hmm. on American soil right now. So I can't even get on. Defend yourself. To defend myself. So now I see all these reports, and you know, 12 hours ahead oh, over yeah, right, in, right. In, in China. So <laughs> right. I'm staying up 4 a.m. like, what's, what's being reported now? Yeah. What's being, and I didn't have a sense of how to manage that yeah. when all the media is, is coming after me. So now my agent's on the phone. <laughs> He's like, we should do this. We should put out a statement. We should do this. But I had the conversation that needed to be had with the organization, and then I was gonna have it with Bron. But as soon as I got over to China, boom. Now it's bronze is tempted to do this and yeah. Kyrie saying this about this. And that's not the that's not the image I want to create. Me and him never had beef like that. Your co-workers never doing, it, doing it again. We we never <laughs> 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 we never, is a mother, yeah, but we never bad, had bro. that was yeah. never our energy that we had. They gonna print what's never. Well, oh, Kyle wasn't talking to the team for the last month. They started throwing all they created, these they things created that, that they created the whole thing. So now they're asking me, yo, why why didn't you tell them? Why didn't you I'm like some things can't really be shared in open spaces right. all the time. And it took me right. six years to even talk about it openly because I'm comfortable with my decision. Before, I, I was questioning, like, yo, right. did, I, did, did I do this the right? You know, I, I left one of the best to play the game. And I started listening to, the, People, right, right. <laughs> to that. That started to even. That's where the mental health that you just brought up comes into play. Because when you start believing what other people say about you, mm. <laughs> You become a shell of yourself. Yeah. You, you become somebody that's different and you're trying to be perfect for others yeah. that don't really give a fuck about whether, right. <laughs> whether exactly. or not you that's breathe right. another day. They're like, man, you, you're just another motherfucker that we could just right. uh, buy, you know, troll or hate on. Yeah, jump shot. Yeah, right. you, that's all you do. So I had to make the shift to be able to stand on my own 10 toes and be able to be a man out here, be a king, be a god, however y'all describe yourself. Yeah. This is what I describe myself as. Uh, I started dig, digging deeper into my faith. I started digging deep into Islam. I started digging deep into the community um, of following the word of God and being able to have some discernment regardless of whether the world is in chaos or not. I'm at peace with myself. So regardless of what other people are going on, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm good. Let me so just walk through the, this door. after the trade, right? It's yeah, that, that's why I said I went okay. through that span oh, okay. yeah. where I was reclaiming my power. I found my tribe, I reclaimed my identity, and I stopped listening to what everybody else was saying about what an athlete is supposed to be, mm. the image that we're supposed to be every day, why you know we're supposed to be doing the things we do every day, the purpose. Mm. I had to find that purpose. That's the, 
had to but find that you, purpose. You always talk but about for, like like Kobe, right? I, I see mm -hmm. a lot of your articles. You always talk about the Mamba, Kobe this, Kobe that. Actually, when, when we beat the um, the Warriors, you called Kobe after the joint. I, yeah, that was so dope to see that. Yeah, did he have any like influence on maybe you getting traded or? Ate him or like, did you lean on him during that time yeah, like yeah. A, as a mentor? Like an old head mentor. I'll tell you this. <laughs> Before, no, 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 not just not even smart. I'm laughing. I'm laughing. <laughs> I'm laughing. I'm laughing because Kobe had nothing to do with it. Okay. But and then people started throwing in like. I heard that too. Right, Kobe, right, right. Kobe is influencing Kyrie to ask for a trade because he asked for a trade from Shaq, and he was like everybody yeah. started attributing it, and that was the furthest thing from the truth. He was really helping me cope with my decision and stand on my decision and, and be happy with whatever situation I was going to go into. It happened to be Boston, right? And in that, what made it even uh, crazier was Boston was number one in the East when I got traded to them. We were number two the year oh, before. Wow. So we had a series with Boston and when Boston came calling, I was like, yeah, absolutely. This makes sense. <laughs> like, what, you know what I mean? Let was me, it that easy? Like, why not? Yeah, why not? Why not Boston? <laughs> I'm like, it's, it's the Boston Celtics. Yeah. Right? You know, it's, this is one of the most historical franchises. My, my mom and my dad went to Boston University. I got my first offer from Boston University when I was in fifth grade. You know, I used to be up at summer camps for two weeks at a time. So we used to drive back and forth. I used to be up there with my cousin's family in the summertime. So I had history in Boston. So it wasn't foreign to me when they said, yo, we want, to, want you to be a part of our future. Mm -hmm. On that phone call, they said, yo, are you going to sign here long term? I said, uh, yeah, most likely, but I'm not sure yet. So Kobe was like, yo, you, you ended up in a perfect situation. This is a, this is a franchise of, of, you know, one of the yeah. best leagues in the world. They have plenty of championships. Sports They're going to in invest right. in you. They have great fan base. Yada, you start going down the list. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that stood out to me was um, when he told me how uh, – how happy he was for the situation, but it was the Celtics knowing that he had, <laughs> I'm like, is he really telling me this? Because, you know, he means it or is he telling me it's just to, to kind of mess with me? But he, he uh, really helped me cope with making that decision and be able to, and then being able to grow. What did know? that look like? You know, cause you what? have those like legendary moments with your mentors or, you know, those OGs in the locker room, like, how does Kobe help you cope? How does he mentor you to this? Like a conversation? Is he like, yo, yeah. you need to do this? Yeah. Or is let's he hear, like, let's hear Kobe. Let's Kobe. Hear, or is he let's, more yeah. like a therapist? Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's hear a conversation. Mentor. Bro. All right. So role play with yourself <laughs> with Kobe. <laughs> Kobe, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Call him up. Call him up. Call him up. Yo, what's good? Yo, what's good? What's good, Kobe? He's like, all right, I'm gonna text you. Hold on, what? I'm gonna text you. I'm gonna text you because he once he. Towards the end of his career, he he was doing different things. Yeah. You know what I mean? And w this is when I got to Boston, he was retired. Right. So you know he's running oh, Kobe. Right, he, right, he's right. running. He's being with his family. He's being with his daughters. Right, he's busy. He ain't got no time to just be, you know, tapping in all the time. So I understood. And and, and again, um, we just had a, a different type of mentor mentee relationship because he he knew how curious I was, not not just about being great at the game, but just life. You know. So he he put the alchemist. In, mm -hmm. in my hands, the book. The book. He told yep. me to read that. It's a great book. Kobe's uh, smart too. Yeah, man. He it, it's like being around him. He really sparks that that curiosity even more so because he studied all the greats in other industries in order to help him focus in on what he was doing. He said, "Man, just you you can look at the game and you can study the greats, but really get a, a world view of all those that are doing great things alongside you. You're not the only one that's dealing with these things. You know, you dealt with a trade, you dealt with, you know, the pressures of being a star guy and you wanted your own thing and you wanted this and you wanted that. But now it's about really taking the time to get to know who the people are around you. Invest the time to get to know them as much as you invest in watching the game. Because I'm an avid YouTube watcher. I'm an avid studier of, of all the greats in basketball, but he really put all those other authors um, in my life so I can help balance mm. what I was into. Mm. I, I, man, since I was 12 or 13 years old, I've, I've studied basketball more than, you know, 10,000 hours, as they say, before you become yeah. an expert or a master yeah. of your craft. Right. I've played more than 10,000 hours. I've done all that. So when I got to Boston, I was ready for a new challenge, but I didn't know how it was going to come from within. And right. that's why he gave me the alchemist is like the journey is the reward embrace the journey mm -hmm. don't think about the end goal so much where you're fixated on trying to prove people wrong or 
you know, be at the mountaintop without going through the details that it takes to really appreciate it. So um, that was him and his mentorship was like, yo, stay curious, bro. I know you're different. I, I, I know you're different. You're not like everybody else out here. So you're not going to ask the same questions. And I loved making him laugh because everybody would always see Kobe as being very serious. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How'd you do that? He, he was the he was the the best, in my opinion, when he was retired because he opened up the door to so many opportunities that he smiled way more. Yeah. Way more, bro. He had no problem. How had, did you do that? You said you, you love making him smile. Jokes. <laughs> Jokes How? like because I, I go back to the the legendary moment was it um, 2012 yeah 2012 you a baby yeah and then you went at him in practice yeah yep 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 definitely definitely because that was a moment because like a lot of times like man who's this kid that's when you really gain yeah. respect from the OGs that was dope I just said it earlier that was crazy though <laughs> yeah like that's that's that energy that I had in uh in Philly that day. Oh, look, there you go. Yeah, he had it again. He had it again. He had it again. You messy. I'm at it. Yeah. I'm, at it. I'm at it. No, no. And, and uh, I, I bring that up because that, that has been my mentality since I came into this. I'm going at anybody and everybody, and I'm here to show you that I, I just want to get the best out of you, and you get the best out of me. That's what this is all about. So how I did it was he wasn't really in competition, um, you know, in the standings anymore. Nope. So... I just I just sent him a few texts, man. I can't really tell y'all what it was. I just sent him a few no, texts, man, tell that just make him smile, bro. You know, I was like, here's this young kid just still trying him in text messages, like, yo, I hope you know. You know? <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for. Bro, come on, give us one text. Just give us one. Come on, for the viewers. <sighs> yeah, for the Kobe lovers. <laughs> I'm a mama fan. Let me see, man. I was talking about this last night on my Twitch too. What? Uh, let me think, man. Cause I don't, I don't want to. Nah, yeah. I get real emotional about it, bro. Oh, it's still, oh, yeah, it's still, well, it's still an open wound. You right, know, yeah. I'm still healing from it, as everybody is. All the Kobe lovers, and, and more importantly, I'm very sensitive about his family. Right. And I respect, sure respect I put that. Kobe in the his right way. So yeah. even if I'm joking around, like some of the personal stories, right. I, 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 I keep to myself. That. But I tell you one, it was, um, it was during. Uh, I'll tell you about that phone call during 2016 when I called him. The chip. Yeah, I was a little tipsy after I had a few. Yeah, there uh, you go. <laughs> champagne, <laughs> champagne, you know, champagne showers. shots going going into it. Um, and I called him and uh, called him and he answered. Call or Facetime. Facetime. Okay. Facetime. Facetime. There you go. Never Facetime before that. Never Facetime. Yeah, real old head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he probably called you. Yeah. Yo, what's up? Yo, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yo, your advice worked. Your advice worked, bro. <laughs> You told me not to give a fuck about what nobody said. Yeah. You told me, yo, don't pay attention to anybody that's not giving you positive energy, man. And it worked. Your advice worked, bro. Damn, we really did it. I felt like I, I, I helped him cement his legacy by having somebody be successful at the highest level, actually listening. Right. You know what I mean? I, I some people want to want to. Uh, be the best at what they do, but they're not as curious to go up to you or you or you and ask you straight up questions. What is what did y'all what did you do day to day? That was me. Even when I challenged him in 2012, lead up to 2016, he knew that I was going to be competitive, but I was just ultra, ultra, ultra curious and humble to sit with him to be able to ask him pressing questions about mentally, spiritually, physically, how did you get to be who you are? How did you deal with the pressure? So when I when I got a chance to FaceTime him, he was sitting next to Gigi, and it, it was like, it was just like it was just family right. time, you know. Right. Yeah. And we got to celebrate that, and uh, just to see him smile and be proud, it was like, it, it, was, right. it was one of the best moments. Kobe, he the, he's the he's best. Role, man. He's, he's the best role model ever. I love Kobe. Hey, yeah. he's a dog. You met, you met Kobe. Right? Oh, he a Philly guy. Yeah, yeah I'm like, mm -hmm. Now, real quick, in my crib, he get, got his signed jersey and his signed shoes. He sent me personalized to Shady McCoy. But anyway, I do want to ask you this. Now, I only wear like three pair of sneakers, right? I wear oh, three pair of Nikes. Right. Air Force Ones, right? Up north in style, that's what we do. I don't know what they do in Atlanta. They Shut don't up. wear Air Force Ones no more. Well, I wear Air Force Ones, right? High top and low tops. Anyway, I wear my Mambas when I'm crossing cats over with the, you know what I mean, the fadeaways, and then I wear Kyrie's. What's up with Nike? 16 years old, uh, I started at St. Patrick's High School, Jordan Brand. Uh, they ended up. Um, unofficially sponsored me at that time. Went to Duke, big Nike school. You know, it was I was wearing CPs at that school. It was one of my favorite pairs. I was wearing LeBron soldiers, my favorite pair. And that's Break why we're so tied into the yeah. business models with, with hip hop and, and art and, and, and music. 
is because we have similar. You gotta sell yourself break too, down, like break, break, break down the, game. the business for us uh, a little bit more. Cause like, have you ever wondered why football players don't get these deals? Like, yeah, OBJ that signed that uh, like five year, like thirty five million. And did, so I don't even know. And the did exact AB number, signed so one for like a million. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and AB like that was that's a lot of money for football. Yeah, a million dollars a year. You know, yeah. five million dollars a year. Do you know why we why we don't make a lot of money? I, well, they don't have a helmet I on. I can't answer that. They don't have a helmet on. Well, it's because we don't move units, right? Like when you yeah. think about it, mm -hmm. and so you just broke down the units and the economics of it. a lot of the players come in and you're like, yeah, I take whatever deal, and we really don't know the business. So can you break down, like, how basketball players approach the business in the shoe world? I can't answer that. Like, why it's a big difference mm -hmm. per se, other than you know the the stigma that is out there is you guys wear helmets, you, you and it's more of us. It's well, more of us too. It. It's more, it's more it. of us though. Huh? We don't move units. No, I don't. See, I don't. And then like, I wouldn't agree clean. with that. Like I wouldn't agree with that like, because like, if, if I were if I was coming up to you and offering you a deal, I would offer you a multi level deal where I I would have you design the SB. I would have you design shoes that show more of your off court. But we never like, did that. That's what OBJ. That's what OBJ pushed it for but, in, in football. Yeah, you Cruz had trainers. You can wear, wear Kyrie's from basketball Jackson. or going out to a date. Correct. We got cleats. Yeah, we got cleats. You know what but, but, but what the, he just yeah, said is important. People are wearing ones. People oh yeah, that's wearing, true. Yeah. People are wearing uh, different type of shoes where they're turning the, the bottom of the, the. But the problem the shoe. is we're not in it. Like you said, you went back to 2016 when you was wearing those colorful shoes. One of the rules you got passed, like you got millions of people watching you. And that's when they buy it, and that's when they fall in love with it. So, yeah, like OBJ kind of pushed it. He pushed it forward because mm -hmm. it was that like multi-layer type deal where it's like, yo, like make your own signature shoe. But they don't see OBJ, you know, catch that one hand touchdown or that ball in those shoes. Now, what they banking on now for football players is, yo, you have a, a follower, a following now. You got 13 million followers. So now, about heaven knows streetwear shoes on yeah. and seeing that the lifestyle now you can move more units but mm. that's really it i, I just I, you know i want to know more of like the basketball approach to the business but it's, it's a little bit different because again i told you at 16 that's when i was yeah I, I went to a school that was sponsored by Jordan brand. Wow. <laughs> so there was already a, a relationship yeah, since then. They already knew right. something. Since then, it, I, I don't know how it works when you guys, you know, I know that you guys have like Nike tournaments and stuff like that all yeah. around the world, but we're, we're wearing the shoes 24 seven because that is part of the, brand. That, that is part of the MO there is that we want to be part of your life from when you wake up until you go to sleep, you have shoes on. That, mm. that is that is what you want somebody to do, but because it, it's so centralized on football or, or, or basketball, it loses that connectivity to youth when they're just like, I just want shoes to run around the playground. Right. You know, mm. I, I just want shoes to just go out outside. That's where majority of my business is, is in the youth sports. Yes. Mm. All of them. It's the youth. I, yes, I, the I, youth I, love them. 18 year olds and up, yeah, man, people are too judgmental. <laughs> I, mean, I love I love AJ ones and you love the historical, you know, shoes that came out and I respect all that. But the youth are just trying to go outside, you know, strap on their shoes and, and get dirt and get, get to it. it. Yeah, right. that's it. Right. That's it. Where do you that's, rank where do you, do you know where you rank amongst like the top selling Shoes or performers. Yeah, tell him, like, look at this. Why he's smirking again? Yeah. Like, you know, I don't even know how he acts. He sells 85% of the shoes. Huh? He knows. He sells 85% of the shoes. No, so he knows. He's saying 85% of the shoes. He wanted the players. He wanted to know, like, what do you rank as far as selling the most shoes? I'll, I'll say this. When I told you that it's 4 million units, that's the most in, in my category. So I'm, I'm, that's the most units in my category. They put out four million units for. He wants you to break it down even so more. So yeah, yeah. Why he smirking? Yeah, just tell yeah. us. I, that's no <laughs> way. Give us, he give us a Duke graduate. Yeah, oh, man. He want me to we, we, he want read between the lines. Figure it out. Figure it out. Is it you, bro? Yeah, right. Curry, he he that's what y'all want to hear. See, that's yeah. what y'all want to hear right there. No, I, and look, it's not about comparison. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why though. I'll tell you why. This boy's funny. I'll tell you why. I do like your, your shoes, though. Say that. Hey, your shoes do look good. His shoes do look good. We're all in the same We're in the same field. We can against right? each other. But why would I, I, I tell I you talk something about, else? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's a... Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm not trying to slight him. nobody. You know what I mean? These are just my numbers. These are my brand numbers. it is, though. Like, he don't need to talk about Jordan shit. I'll tell you this, though. Do y'all know how many signature athletes there are right now? In basketball? In basketball. I know. I know. Yeah, I know. Signature? I know. I know. How many? It's not more than 10. It's seven. KD. It's seven, right? 16. 
16. You, 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 you talking about Nike or you talking about both? Signature, all, all, signature athletes across the board. Steph, in all, in all, Steph Curry. New Balance with um, uh, Kawhi. Um, Kawhi, you got Carden, you got KD, Mello now you got Puma. Curry. Mello, I got Mello. Dang, you got you Mello. said Mello already. Lamello. CP? Okay, six. C -C oh, you said LaMelo. LaMelo. CP, yeah. And then what about LaMelo? Um, that's eight. Uh, Zion. Paul George. Zion. Paul George. Zion. Paul George. Yeah, yeah. What, what's yeah. His, what's Paul he doing? Paul George. Paul George. Keep going, keep going. Wait, wait, that's nine. That's Luka. ten. Luca. Luca got a shoe? Oh, Luca has his own shoe. Oh, damn. James Harden. You said that. I said so Orlando, we had 11. Yeah. But who, who's the who's the Let's keep going. Let's figure it out. Let's figure it out. They were the best players. A B don't got one. Embiid John Moran about to get one. He got one? And B one does have one. 12. Oh, wow. 12. John oh Lillard got one. 13. I already said him. Clay don't got one. Clay. Clay, does does Clay one. I love Clay. What Clay got? Clay's with uh oh, Anta. Who? Anta. The drink? <laughs> no, the shoe brand. In China. I don't... Anta, you never heard of Anta no, Sports? No, no. Nah, I never heard of Ming? What? Yeah, Ming. yeah, I love. Oh. Man, He's I don't on listen, man. Look, man. Uh, uh Wade's guy. He got one. D'Angelo. D'Angelo. I love, bro. But that doesn't compare. Yeah, oh, Russell. Yeah, bro, I'm telling y'all right oh, now. Russell, that's 16. Oh. Okay, oh, Russell Westbrook. Hey, oh, hey, hey, listen. That's I'm telling y'all right now. Oh, that's why he's talking about the new units. Hey, bro. He's a smart dude. He said all that to let us know. I'm selling units out of 16. Okay, I'm feeling you. I'm feeling you. I'm picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm in the heat. So he's basically saying oh, he's in the he top Oh, he said everything up for us to, out of 16 dudes. Yeah. I don't we, know who number one or number two, the math. but you that's do the math. I'm selling us. numbers. I'm selling units. Yeah. So he's like a platinum play. rapper compared to gold rappers. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go, Shady. Okay, he's playing him, Shady. Shady. So I'll, I'll answer your question. You said, what was the question you asked? Well, you, you know what my question was. You said, who's the top? Yeah. I'm, I'm, at the, I'm, I'm at the top of the shoe design, pushing units, and being able to do more than just Damn. put a shoe out. Why? Be because... I'm not saying that the other guys don't do it. I'm just a little bit more seasoned being in the creative room because I've been doing it since day one. Mm. Most most guys go in there and they and they, the allow, they allow the creators mm. to talk to them mm -hmm. and be like, all right, what do you think about the shoe? And you'd be like, oh yeah, I like it. Right. Oh, yeah, it's okay. Mm. Like, change the shoelaces. And I'm like, no. I take that joint to the hood and be like, y'all y'all mess with this or not? Yeah. Oh, I see. Wow. see that's Before it comes out, I like ask. I ask. Yes. Like he like wow. the, he like the wow. producer. Like you. Let me, mm -hmm. I got that's you. dope, bro. Yeah. That is dope. Mm -hmm. We going test. How can this? we take some of these sh uh, shoes to some kids in the hood where we are? Let me know. Salute. Yeah, Let me know. <laughs> I, that's also that's also one of the Smart the leading. Uh, hmm, it's one of the leading ways where you could really really make an impact. Is you just put them out. Put them out. I, I give out at least thirty thousand, forty thousand. Well, five thousand. Let me just free shoes. I got five thousand. Right. A little so, for you. Just send them out. Just send so, them out. I, I, all right. I, I'm gonna come back to that. Okay. Because you give it, you give back a lot. Yeah, you, you didn't even talk one. about yeah. that. That's yeah. it's it's crazy what you do, but the way it wades, bro, that's dope. They did. They, they, it's the dopest. He, he Wade's putting out to me the dopest shoes right now. Luca got a shoe. Am I yeah, wrong? I and I, and I, take you out of it. I'm taking you it? out of it. Am you, I seeing this wrong with what Wade is doing with the shoes and sneakers? It's what is it? Leaning. You, you have to. You have to. What is it? To, What's the name of the company? Uh, Leaning. You. Just, no, I think it. I may, it may be Leaning. I'm, I don't want to. But it's way of Wade. Way of Wade. But his own brand. Yeah. Wow. So whenever, whenever you, huh? Leaning. Leaning. Oh, Ling Yin. See, I don't even, I didn't even, yeah. I didn't even know. I didn't know Luca. I thought he was part of Ling Yin, but uh, no, no. you said, what was your question again? Is my eye, is my taste Oh, good? wait, wait. What, what, wait what, he, what he got right is he went in there and gave them the blueprint of how he wants to run his house. You have to think of your, yourself as they say, as an institution or a brand or, or, you know, you have to think of yourself as a house. How many houses are there? Have you, you know, Louis Vuitton has fashion a house. Houses. Fashion, fashion houses. Fashion houses. That's how he thinks of it, because he took the same knowledge from the fashion world and applied it to the shoe game who, and didn't who is, who really it? make it, make, make it about, about only oh, basketball. Yeah, okay. yeah, he didn't make it only about basketball. It's a lifestyle. Yeah. Right. Wearing right. shoes is a lifestyle. I like D-Wade. That's why I have a game shoe, I have a low, and then I have a core shoe. My core is... Only selling at Dick Sporting Goods, you know. It's only selling at um, champs. You know, yeah, champs. It's only selling at the small. That's eighty dollars, sixty, sixty to eighty dollars. Then the low is a hundred dollars to one ten. That's 
you wear that when you work out, you can wear it on court, you can wear it off court. And then the game shoe is specifically meant for when you put it in your backpack and when you take it out <laughs> and you're playing. That's, That's it. it. So I have three different shoes that you can choose from. So I hear, I hear uh, a lot of uh, business savviness. Yeah. Um, talk to me about like, you know, I, I look up and I'm reading what KD's doing and you got- <clears throat> KD's the monster got, of the business. Uh, you know, uh, KD Smart, Valley. Russell Wilson, you know, yeah. Serena Williams. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the things that you're involved in now? Like, and, and how do you approach investing and, and business? And Well, have any of y'all been burned in business? Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. So I got enough scars to, <laughs> to, to really understand that you have to take your time and be patient with your, your business uh, knowledge and how you acquire it and how you get it from the right people. You got to talk to the people that not only are successful, but they've had a, enough failures to speak on all the lessons they've learned to be able to pass on that to you. So in, in business right now, man, I'm, I'm, I'm dang near in everything that you can think of, whether it be in music, whether it be in the NFT crypto space, whether it be in, in uh, starting my own house uh, underneath the house that I have right now at Nike. Real estate um, was shady. Real estate. Uh, I, brought, <laughs> you know, I brought a lot of property in Jersey once I moved back. The taxes are horrendous, but um, I got to talk to our governor about that shit. But it's like, the, th those are interest for me, like small ones. But really, what I invest a lot of, of my time and capital in is revolutionary work. You know, things that are changing the world, things yeah. that are moving and shaking rooms, things that make people uncomfortable in their skin when you start talking about oppressive systems that have been keeping us in bondage mentally, spiritually, and physically for a long period of time. This has been going on for centuries. I feel like um, us as melanated individuals, we, we're, we're just now starting at, to realize that the work has already been done for us in the past. Our ancestors left a lot of wisdom for us to pick up. So we don't have to recreate the wheel, but we dang sure got to unify in order to make this nation that we feel like we can survive in. You know, I've, I've awakened every single day and you realize everywhere you turn and there's some type of oppressive system that's there that doesn't, it doesn't look like me. Right. And most of the time, you know what I mean? So the money that's being work. passed around doesn't go through us first. It, it goes through many people's hands before it gets to us. Tell us about some of these books mm -hmm. right here that you brought, these bro. These powerful so, books you brought, so the knowledge, brother. Nah, for sure. So, ah, I'm glad, I'm glad y'all asked. So this, this first one is, uh, Anthony T. Browder, um, it's survival strategies for Africans in America, mm. and it's, uh, uh, I think, 13 chapters in here uh, that really speak on um, just being able to, to, to reason with yourself when things are being subliminally thrown your way, and um, they try to hide this stuff, and, you know, they, they try to keep it away from us, so this knowledge is just a, an awakening, you know what I mean? Like, it really is just just wisdom, you know, he's still, he's still alive, Anthony T. Browder, he, he does trips to Kemet or Egypt where, you know, every single summer, um, he excavates the pyramids, uh, he goes over there and, and really teaches people about our spirituality and why they shot the noses off the pyramids, why they have all of our artifacts and museums and showcase it back to us, why we grow up in our education system and they tell us that you know, the, their version of history is better than ours. And, you know, there's this big back and forth of, um, you know, a fight based on race, culture, and class. I mean, we deal with it all the time. So uh, that's Anthony C. Browder. This is called The Black Holocaust for Beginners. Um, it, it really speaks on um, our viewpoints on um, what people don't like to admit to, but it's a genocide against our people, whether it be through drugs, whether it be through, um, you know, disease in the mind, whether it be through laboring for other people, mm -hmm. whether it be them starting our history um, and teaching people that it started with slavery, which it didn't. You know what I'm saying? We, we've been here for thousands of years um, and a lot of the knowledge that was passed on to us uh, came from ancient people that knew what, what, what the time we're in now. So it calls it the Black Holocaust and I'm not, you know, trying to downplay the Jewish Holocaust or any other Holocaust, but our Black Holocaust is something that I feel like deserves um, the same amount of um, attention. And then this other one is uh, one that I could leave with y'all, but it's, it's called uh, Towards Black Community Development. And, in, and it really is just centralized on how do we go further beyond just talking in these conversations about what's going on, we actually act on it. 
You know what I mean? We're way beyond just me lecturing you and telling y'all all the time. Y'all older than me are trying to tell our elders are trying to tell the youth like this what happened um, in our history. But it, it goes way beyond um, just talking about it and actually doing it. So those are just three books and I could leave those with y'all. Um, you guys could read them and pass them along if y'all have time or anything like hey, that. What's that one book that Kobe told you to read? I'm an alchemist. The alchemist. I'm read that one first. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I love it. Yep. Appreciate you coming on the show, Hold man. On. You did a great one job. One more question for oh, okay. Ain't over yet? Okay. It's been long enough. We'll go ahead. Just should ask one more question, you know, because the people want to hear this question. People do want to know. Is there any kind of way that you and Brian Mike can get back to <laughs> We had to fight to get a meal. Yeah, wrongfully accused. We had to fight to get a pill. That's why we right to get a deal. He on the team, he gotta eat, you know. Spike, spike your skills. Fat. Keep it riding for the fam. You gotta light the wooden wheel straight up. But in the past bad, work up in the trash bag. I'll pass a lot to take the test before I pass class. Yeah, and my family needed bread. I had to come correct. That's why I keep airing it out like I just passed gas. 